Well, one of the things we've been committed to since day one when the first drop of water came through this plant is we're going to protect public health to the highest level. New tonight on CBS Colorado at 6, we are uncovering information about the safety of drinking water in Colorado. Good evening, I'm Michael Spencer. And I'm Michelle Griego, in for Karen Lee. Tonight, your reporter Katie Weiss learned that about a third of the state's water utilities still haven't tested for toxic forever chemicals in their water. Katie was one of the first to report on how exposure to higher levels of forever chemicals, or PFAS, can cause a host of health problems, including cancer. She started investigating this state and nationwide issue four years ago. This spring, the EPA is limiting the amount of these chemicals chemicals in drinking water for the first time, which means many drinking water utilities are grappling with how to meet those new standards. Katie Weiss is your reporter in Arapahoe County. She joins us live now in her community of Southeast Aurora. And Katie, Aurora Water prides itself on its strict standards. So have they made any changes? Well, Michelle, Michael, you know, water quality specialists here at Aurora's water treatment facility tell me that they're really ahead of the game when it comes to PFAS. They have been making some changes. They've been testing for this stuff, and they've managed to get their levels down below the EPA's new legal limits. So today I'm going to give you a behind-the-scenes tour of how they're doing that and what they're new now needing to do to make sure that those levels stay that way. Up to 50 million gallons of water a day go through a treatment train process at Aurora's Peter Benny Water Purification Facility to serve the city's 400,000 customers safe water to drink. I feel very comfortable drinking this water and actually my grandchildren drink this water. Kevin Linder with Aurora Water says even though the EPA's new laws on PFAS just went into effect last month, he and his team have been preparing for the last few years. We're always looking for ways to be proactive in the protection of public health instead of reactive. Not the case for about 300 of the 900 water districts statewide who still haven't even tested for PFAS, much less implemented filtration measures like these in Aurora. And the contaminants are being absorbed onto the grains. Where they're using something called granulated activated carbon or GAC. This is what the GAC looks like. It's porous carbon. So when the water filters through it, the PFAS sticks to it and the water comes out clean. Right now, the city of Aurora is testing out multiple different options of other ways to better filter out the PFAS. And by the end of the year, they could be combining this with something else. An alternative adsorptive material that is targeting specifically the PFAS compounds. And so we're looking at if that's a good fit. But like many other water utilities, Aurora has had to stop using some of its wells because they contain too much PFAS. So despite these filters, Aurora is still planning to build a new treatment facility so it can use those wells again. We are in the middle of designing that and we will build it very quickly so that we can bring that source back into the system. The more sources we have, I think the more resilient we can be. Some cities have already had to increase rates to customers to pay for PFAS treatment. Linder's not sure yet if they'll have to do that in Aurora. I don't believe that there's been any cost passed on to the ratepayer. The cost of the operation and maintenance of the absorbers is significant, but that's another driver for us to be very thoughtful and deliberate. Now, to see if your water district has begun testing for PFAS, we put uh, several links for you on our website, cbscolorado.com, so you can check that out. And if your water district isn't on that list, we've also put several resources for you on this, this link on our website, so that way you can purchase a filter at your home in the meantime to take care of your health. Reporting live in Southeast Aurora, I'm Katie Weiss, covering Colorado First. Katie, thank you. And Katie is committed to reporting on what matters to you in Arapahoe County. She's invested because that's her home, too. If you have a story you want Katie to look into, just give us a call on our tip line or send us an email through our website.